What's going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video, just like always, we're going to be breaking down the overall markets, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I personally did today in the markets, as well as some stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and looking to trade here in the month of October in 2019. And guys, the markets got absolutely rocked today, we're going to be talking about what caused that, and if you guys saw the title of this video and if you were paying attention to the markets yourselves you probably know what caused that drop and a lot of individual stocks that I personally track got hit very hard and we'll talk about that as well so this is going to be a loaded video if you guys do find value in it if you do enjoy this video feel free to go down below hit that like button consider subscribing if you want to see further content about the stock market trading and investing this is the channel for you and let's get right into it guys starting off with the SPX, the S&P 500 index, the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies. We ended up closing the day down 1.23%, down $36.49. We finally broke below $29.50 today, and we closed below it, so that's a very good sign for the bears. And if you guys have been following my videos for the past couple of weeks, we've been talking about this critical level at $29.50, which wasn't an older resistance back in the end of April of 2019. We obviously broke above it, hit that all-time high. We pulled down, making it a resistance again. And then when we recently broke above it in the beginning of September, I'd say we made it a support again. So now that we broke below it, there's a lot of room to drop here in the S&P with the next closest support I'm personally seeing here is probably around $2,900 flat, right? If we pull this this level, um, I didn't, I don't have it drawn out here quite yet, but right now I'll draw it for you guys. You can see that this was an old resistance back on the 7th of June. We broke above it making it a support, right? We actually bounced above it here on the 3rd of September, making it a support. So right now, we have about a 50-point drop to that next support, and then after that, I'm going to be looking at around 28.50 for the S&P to hold, and if we go even further down, guys, you know, we're going to be getting into the 2700s. You know, we have, um, you know, 2730. That's a very big level there. We also have this level right here, which is pretty prominent at around 2800 flat. These are the possible levels that we could be getting to, you know, if this sell-off continues, and I personally think it is going to continue here. And if we look on the one day, one minute, guys, you can see how aggressive this sell-off was. We gapped up this morning, the bulls had hope here, and then boom, the market's dumped, right? From 29.90 all the way down to around 23, uh, 23 or rather 29.38, that was about a 50 to 60 point drop from the peak to the low of the day, which is absolutely crazy, right? And the bears took over here towards the end of the day as well. The bulls tried to break us out of that 180 SMA resistance. They failed. We ended up making a lower high, and then ultimately we tried pushing to a lower low, but we didn't. So for tomorrow, guys, I'm going to be watching the futures, the large caps. What are they doing, right? Are they gapping down in the morning? That could tell me that we did push to this lower low, and the downtrend at that point is continuing, right? If we zoom out a bit to, let's say, the 20-day, one hour, you can clearly see this is a downtrend, right? We failed to break out of the 50 SMA resistance, which was a level we were talking about in yesterday's video. On this hourly chart, we got rejected clearly at a lower high, and we dumped. If we go back to the 184 hour, the only positive thing that the bulls have right now, one of the only positive things, is we're technically... Still on this little uptrend here, um, you know, as we can see by this trend line, right? This is technically a higher low from the previous, but again, we, we, we're seeing a double top here. You know, we're kind of in this wedge at this point on the S&P where we're squeezing between 2940 right now and that all-time high at around 3027. So all it takes is for tomorrow to dump down here. If we do dump, if we gap down, that's going to break this uptrend and we're going to be fully in the process at that point of making that right shoulder that we've been talking about 
on this channel over the past couple of videos, which is the overall trend that I am seeing here on the four hour chart for the S&P. Um, that's it's the overall trend that it's forming in my opinion, right? We got the left shoulder, the head. And again, if we dump, if we start to break down towards 2,900 flat, and of course below that, that's going to be the the, really the, the beginning of the completion of this right shoulder and I would think at that point we'd see a lot more downside if we start breaking these support levels so going to the Dow Jones Industrial Average guys down 1.28% pretty terrible day today down $343 you guys can see we're peaking below that level of support here at around 26 630 which was an old resistance back in the beginning of May towards the end of April April. So that's a good sign that this theory that I have drawn out here by these trend lines is going to break out or rather play out, right? Because now if we make our way down to the next support, which in this case is around 26.2, you know, the RSI is going to be very oversold at that point, right? We may be getting down to the 20s, 25 on the RSI. Then we may see a bit of a bull run here, not a bull run, but we may see the bulls come back try to fight, right? We may see a bit of a rebound here, bring that RSI back up. And then ultimately, I think we'll get rejected again maybe at this level, right, when the RSI gets to a healthy spot again, then we might try to end up dumping below 26.2, which will lead us to this level at around 25,600. Right now, that's kind of what I'm thinking here with what the technicals are giving me on the Dow. And if we zoom in a bit to the 20-day, one hour, you guys can see, just like we talked about in yesterday's video, and just like I said for the SPX, we got rejected by that 50 SMA and that 180 SMA on the one-hour chart. Both of these levels are resistances. We push to that lower low. The downtrend is still intact, right? And if we go to the one day, one minute, you can see how aggressive the Dow sold off from $27,046 all the way down to $26,500, guys. That's almost, I'd say, around a 500-point drop, about a 480-point drop here from the top to the bottom, which is very, very big. This has to be one of the biggest sell-offs. I don't know if that is true, but I think it's one of the biggest sell-offs that we've had in the markets in the past one month at this point, probably in the past one to two months. I don't know, again, if that's correct. That's just me throwing something off the top of my head because, again, I watch the markets every day. I see the action every single day. And this is, in my recent memory, the biggest red day that we've had. And you guys can clearly see I'm right at that point, right? Because we've been uptrending here, um, you know, pretty much for about a month, right? So this is probably the biggest drop we've had. So overall, that's what I'm looking at for the Dow. Keep an eye if we fill down here to 26.2. That is what I'm thinking, especially if the futures are pointing red, especially if a lot of these large caps are pointing red tomorrow. So the NASDAQ right now is up 22 points, but it did not close green, guys. Best believe that. Let me open up my Yahoo Finance app very quickly. We can see exactly what it ended up doing today. And today, funny thing, guys, it was one of those days that the NASDAQ actually Actually didn't perform the worst out of the three major indexes. It was down 90 points, down 1.13%, which on a percentage basis, it was actually down the least out of the three major indexes. And sometimes it's down, well, most of the time it's down the most. So that's kind of interesting. It seems like tech held up pretty well today as a lot of these industrials got hammered that we'll talk about here due to the manufacturing data being very, very weak. Nonetheless, Nonetheless, the downtrend is still intact on the NQ. If we look at this four hour chart, we are holding 77.30 roughly right now with the futures being up. So that's a good sign that we're fighting to hold that level. But ultimately, I think this is going to play out what we have here um, really uh, shown by these trend lines, right? I think we could potentially dump down to 76 flat, 75.80, roughly this level, right? Which is a support. We've held it in the past multiple times. And then the RSI is going to be very oversold. We might see a breather there. Bulls might come in, run us back up to 77, then ultimately we might 
end up dumping from there, continuing the downtrend and thus forming that right shoulder on the four hour chart that I'm seeing on all of these major markets. If we zoom in a bit here to the 20 day one hour, guys, you can see we're clearly downtrending, right? We failed to break out of the moving averages. We got rejected. We dumped. We're on our way to that lower low, which would be the continuation of that downtrend. If we go to the one day, one minute, we can see we peaked at 78.40. We bottomed out at about 76.90. So that's about a 150 point swing, which has to be in the 2%, right? Almost 2% right there. Um, about 1.94% to be exact. That is pretty, pretty crazy, um, you know, for the NQ here from top to bottom. So overall, guys, that's my thoughts on the market, right? I think there's a lot more downside at this point, especially with this negative data. We're also getting, I believe, the jobs report for September is coming out, I believe, this Friday, which will also have a lot of impact on the market, in my opinion. Probably positive, maybe negative, right? Or not probably positive, either positive or negative based on what the numbers um, are. And that's something that I'm personally watching. So what rocked the markets today, right? Very, very simple. The manufacturing data came in weak. I have these notes right here that I think are interesting. Let me pull them up on my phone very quickly. The report underscored how stress in manufacturing can be amplified throughout the economy. Manufacturing has been hit by weak export markets, especially China, which has been engaged in a bitter trade battle, which we know a lot about, with the Trump administration. Negotiators are supposed to meet in Washington later this month. The sell-off hit industrials, materials, materials, energy and financial stocks the hardest, which we'll take a look at some of those right now. Financials were weighed down by Charles Schwab's announcement it would no longer charge commissions on stock and ETF trades. That's actually not really relevant to what we're talking about here. But overall, the manufacturing data came in weak. And let me show you guys some stocks I got rocked. 3M being one that I personally own, it got crushed. Down 4% today, down about $6. You guys can see we got rejected by moving averages. This one's testing the low that we're seeing here on the four hour chart at around 160. Watch this level as a support. If we dump, this could be a potential short again, because I do think there is going to be pressure on these industrials heading forward, right? If we look at Honeywell, this one got rocked, not as much as 3M, but it was down 3% here, down $5. If we look at Cat, Caterpillar, um, CAT, down 3%, down about $4. So you can see some of these got hit hard. I didn't look at the banking stocks today, so I don't know how bad those got hit, but let's take a look at some banking stocks. Okay, Bank of America down about 2.5%. That's a pretty big red day in terms of a bank. Let's see, Wells Fargo, WFC down about 2.7%. So these are getting hit pretty hard on an individual basis. JP Morgan, not as hard, but still 2%. That's a sizable chunk there. Goldman Sachs, let's see what they did. 2.19% in their red, down about $4.54. So you can see some of these stocks here, guys. Let's take a look at Boeing. I don't know if this one got hit. Boeing, not that bad, down about 1.5%, down $5.53. So you can see, guys, a lot of these stocks have big weight on the Dow Jones, right? Which is why the Dow Jones was down a bit more than the NASDAQ today. And if we look at tech very quickly, you can see it held up, right? Apple actually closed green up 62 cents today. Amazon was only down 26 cents, which is pennies on the dollar compared to how big that, um, it literally is pennies on the dollar compared to how big that stock is, right? Facebook down two bucks. That's a bigger red day, but still not as bad as those the ones that we just talked about. Google, 13 bucks. You know, Microsoft got hit decently here, 1.4%. Nonetheless, it's still holding this horizontal pattern, so this could be a potential play, right? Netflix was actually green today, guys. We can see some bulls are coming in, but ultimately the downtrend is still intact. It was up $1.96, $1.96 today, up 0.73%. So those are just a couple of stocks that you know, did decent today in terms of the tech and ones that did terrible due to that manufacturing data coming out. So let me know down below in the comments, what are your thoughts on that? What are your thoughts on the market? What are your thoughts on tech? What is your thoughts on everything right now, guys? I love talking to you down below in the comment section. Do not be shy. Drop that comment. So what did I personally do today? I traded my bread and butter whenever the markets are red, and that is TVIX, guys. I talk about this in every single video. If you 
guys are in the Discord chat, and if you guys follow me on Twitter, and if you're on my Instagram, you see I send out watch lists every morning. That's something I'm starting to do now, and TVIX is always in my watch list because I'm always watching it. And by the way, if you guys want to see those watch lists every morning, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram, follow the Discord group chat and the Facebook group. I post them on all of those platforms, and all of those platforms are linked down below. So back to what I was doing. And this morning, I traded TVIX again, right? TVIX, this is a volatility ETN. It goes up whenever the VIX is going up and whenever the markets are dumping. The VIX today, guys, was up 15%, up $2.32. Again, the markets got absolutely rocked. S&P down 36. So when the S&P goes down, again, the VIX goes up. What does TVIX do? It does very, very well. So we can see here, you know, once we got the news this morning about the manufacturing data, once we got that, I knew it was going to be a red day, right? Especially with how aggressive the markets dumped, right? If you're in the market long enough, you kind of build an intuition of these types of things. You know, when you get the negative catalyst, when you get the price action, that's very, very aggressive, almost like panic selling. You know, this is something that, it's almost a no-brainer, right? Once I started seeing this dump, I was like, okay, this is aggressive, this is panicky, this is something that is obviously going to push up a lot of these market ETFs that go up when the markets sell off, like TVIX, right? SQQQ is another one, but I didn't trade that. And that's kind of what prompted me to take that position, right? And if we go to TVIX, very simple, right? We got the initial dump off. I didn't end up getting in here, guys. Mistake, honestly, I should have right away. I should have gotten in, but... I kind of got scared a bit. I didn't want to catch it too high. It was oversold or rather overbought. I kind of wanted to wait, right? I wanted to see if we, we were going to pull back, hold a higher low, if the markets were going to continue to sell off, which in my head, my intuition was telling me they were, but I wanted to get the confirmation that they were. Got the confirmation, held a higher low here on TVIX as I got the confirmation of the market sell off on the SPX. We held the 50 SMA support here and I ended up just starting to scale in I think it was at about like 1378, 1380, something like that. And uh, honestly, guys, I was feeling a bit more risky today. Typically, I'd sell on the next upswing, but I actually ended up holding it today. Um, and it actually benefited me very much because let's say I ended up getting in at 1380. I did get in at 1380. Let's say I ended up selling at about, let's say we got out at the peak at about 1420. That'd be a nice 3%, and I'd be ecstatic with that, right? But I actually held it through this this time and uh, I sold off on the next run up and I ended up making close to 4% on the trade as we started to break out of this resistance right we got about 4% on that so that is very very good right typically my days they're not 4% you guys probably know this if you watch the channel religiously, right? And I know some of you guys do watch the channel every day. And if you do, I really appreciate you guys. Typically, I'm doing 0.3% trades. You know, I have a red day the next day sometimes, you know, green day, followed by another green day. Typically, that's kind of how it goes, right? It's not these massive gains of 4, 5, 10% every single day. But sometimes I do get those days where 4% is my total for the day. And that's great, right? Because that puts me ahead on the week by a sizable margin. Even if I get, you know, a half a percent loss here tomorrow, 1% loss, whatever it may be, overall on the day, I'm still, or rather the week, I'm still going to be up, which is very awesome when you do get one of those nice trades where you get a nice cushion um, to kind of kick off the week. And that's kind of what I ended up doing today. So to transition into what I'm watching, guys, it's very simple, right? With these markets closing at levels where I think there's more downside and with these weak manufacturing data uh, points that, or that, that we got, right? And with the, with the jobs report coming here on Friday, you know, I'm waiting to see if the markets dump more and I'm looking to trade again, TVIX, which is what I traded today, SQQQ, which goes up whenever the NASDAQ is selling off, and SPXS, SPXS, which goes up whenever the S&P 500 is selling off. This market ETF's watch list, this is going to be my bread and butter. Honestly, guys, with the market selling off here, it's going to be kind of risky to take a swing trade unless the markets find a bottom, which at this point, 
I'm just being very, very cautious about, right? Because I'm not looking to force anything. I'm looking to be like, okay, this is looking like a bottom on this stock, this market, whether it's the S&P, the NASDAQ, the Dow, and then maybe I'd enter into a swing. But again, I just think there's more downside, which I'm going with my gut here. And then that, that's going to lead me to trade these more than the typical swing trading of large caps that I like and that I think is my bread and butter over the past couple of years of trading, right? But the thing is, guys, you have to be adaptable as a trader. You know, sometimes when these markets are dumping aggressively and you can't really swing trade, you have to be like, okay, maybe I'm going to hold some of these market ETFs for a day or two, even though that's risky, right? But you could do it. Maybe I'll hop in and out of these intraday instead of swing trading, maybe take those profits and hold them for when the market recovers. And then you could put swing trades, uh, put it in swing trades, right? These are some things that you could potentially do, right? I'm going to be watching maybe these industrials, right? We talked about cat, we talked about Honeywell. You know, I'm going to be watching financials, right? I'm going to be watching 3M for potential short plays, right? Maybe some put options. I'm going to be watching tech. We saw Microsoft MSFT. This one's holding the 180 SMA. Seems like it's on a horizontal pattern. You know, this one can easily fill up to 140. Let's say we have a breather day. The markets run up one day. This can definitely gap up about 1-2% in a day. I mean, you guys saw it fall 1.4% in a day, and we've seen it go up one. 0.4% in a day. So this is definitely a play that I'm watching. You know, Apple, of course, I'm keeping my eye on it because it had a strong day today despite the markets getting crushed, which sometimes, guys, it's odd, right? Because the markets get hit and you'd expect Apple to get hit along with it, which is why it's kind of weird that, it, it, you know, it was green today. But nonetheless, right, you know, we, we might be breaking up to all-time highs here, right? Who knows? That's kind of what I'm watching. So that's it for this video, guys. I kind of wanted to keep it more compact, right? Keep all the information compact. I hope you guys found value in it. If you did, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you do want to see further content from me, and let me know down below in the comment section, again, what are your thoughts on the market? What individual stocks are you watching? And do you like it when the markets drop? I love it when the markets drop, me personally, because I like shorting stocks, not really shorting stocks the traditional way, but trading these market ETFs that go up when the markets sell off. It's not shorting, right? But I shouldn't really say that term because it means something else, but I'm looking... Uh, for it to mean um, trading TVIX, but just just scratch that. That's kind of confusing, but I like taking my profits and funneling it into long-term dividend stocks, dividend growth stocks. That's one of my strategies here in the market, and I'd love to know what you guys think about that, right? So I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Peace out.